Hello, welcome. We have a problem here from Khan Academy that a student asked me about. This is a phase shift problem. And what I'm going to do is read the problem to you. And then you can pause it now or after I read it, try it on your own, and then we'll solve it together. Antonio's toy boat is bobbing in the water next to a dock. Antonio starts his stopwatch and measures the vertical distance from the dock to the height of the boat's mast which varies in a periodic way that can be modeled approximately by a trigonometric function. The vertical distance from the dock to the boat's mast reaches its highest value of negative 27 centimeters every three seconds. The first time it reaches its highest point is after 1.3 seconds, and its lowest value is negative 44 centimeters. Find the formula of the trigonometric function that models the vertical height h between the dock and the boat's mast t seconds after Antonio starts his stopwatch. To find the function using radians, here's where we put our function h of t. What is the vertical distance? 2.5 seconds after Antonio starts his stopwatch. Round your answer, if necessary, to two decimal places. So if you haven't already, pause it and try it out. Otherwise, let's just dive right into this problem. So first of all, let's make sense of what's going on. I've got an image of a boat here, and there's a dock. Now the dock in this case is above the boat. It's a toy boat, right? A dock on the water right here. Let's say this is the level of our dock right here. This would be above the boat because it makes sense, right? The dock is meant for real boats, not toy boats. So we've got the dock and we've got, it's bobbing up and down in the water, the toy, the toy boat, right? And bobbing, of course, just means it's going up and down, up and down. And what we're tracking as it goes up and down is the height of the mast. Now the mast is this thing right here. This is the mast. And we're looking at its height relative to the dock. So that just means if I imagine, um, if I imagine this horizontal line right here, let me just draw this. Right, at some, any point in time, there's a height of the mass as it moves up and down. And we're saying, well, how does that compare to the height of the dock? Right, so we're looking at this distance right here. The height of the mass relative to the dock as a function of time. Now, the highest point it reaches is negative 27 centimeters. So it's a little bit below the dock when it's the highest, and then negative 44 centimeters when it's at its lowest. So we can model that movement up and down as telling us with a trig function. So I'm going to use sine or cosine. And the first thing I'm going to do, and then I do this in, I think all of my phase shift problems is sketch it out to make sense of it. We're told that, let's say here's one, we're told at 1.3 seconds, the, the boat reaches, reaches its highest level, which is negative 27 centimeters. So I'm going to extend my line right here, give myself some more room. Right. Most of my work right here is going to be in the negatives because the boat is below the dock level. So say this is negative 10, negative 20, and it goes all the way down to negative 44, 30, 40, and 50. Right, Negative 50, negative 40, and so on. So I'm just labeling this, and I'm going to actually erase this so my graph doesn't get too cluttered. All right, so our first point that we're given for the boat is that 1.3 seconds, it reaches its highest of negative 27. I'll just say it's about here. And I'm going to label it so there's no confusion. This point is saying at 1.3 seconds, the boat reaches its height of negative 27 centimeters. And it also tells us that that happens every three seconds. So let's put another point on there. Let's say this is 2, 3, and 4. If you add 3 seconds to 1.3, it's going to be 4.3 seconds. You're going to get right another point here. So at 4.3 seconds, we're at the same height. Now it doesn't tell us when the lowest value happens, but the way this is going to work is that this function, right? It's going to do something like just a rough sketch. It's going to dip down to negative 44 about here, come back up, and keep going. Now, where, how did I know where to put this valley, right? Well, I know that the height of this point, they're, they're telling us it's at negative 44. But to find the x position, left and right position, it's exactly halfway between, right, 
1.3 and 4.3. It's exactly in the middle. It's the midpoint of those two because of the symmetry of these type of waves. So to find this value right here, I just look at 1.3. I add that to 4.3. and I divide it by 2. I take the, the average, essentially, to find the midpoint, which is where this will be. 1.3 plus 4.3 divided by 2. And that's going to give me to the calculation already, excuse me, with my notes, 2.8. And that's just the halfway point, midpoint. All right, it's 0.5 above 1.3. And 1.5 above 1.3 and 1.5 below 4.3. It's right in the middle. Okay, why would we do that? Well, I like to get a sketch and get a sense of it. Do we need that exact minimum point to figure everything out? Not exactly. Um, so that's just an unnecessary step. I think it's helpful. So why don't we need that exact point? Well, as we're looking at this function right here, let's find the midline. Let's say I want to find my midline. It's the middle of our function. Where is that? Right? Where is that midline? And let me just actually erase some of this red because my graph is cluttered here. I think that's a little overwhelming. And let me rewrite down what we had, 2.8. And we want to draw the midline. There's some midline here. It's the halfway between um, this maximum at negative 27 and this minimum at negative 44. So we can just do negative 44 plus negative 27 and divide that sum by 2. You can test that out. You should get negative 35.5. This is our midline. And the amplitude is the distance between a maximum and the midline or a minimum and the midline. So you take the absolute value of the height of a max. In this case, you can avoid the x position of the, the min. Or you can take the y position, negative 44, and subtract it. Uh, by negative 35.5 and take the absolute value. No matter how you do it, the amplitude, it, I'll do it in this way, is um, the absolute value of negative 27 minus negative 35.5. And you always take the absolute value. The amplitude um, is a distance, right? And that's going to be, that's going to get us our amplitude of 8.5. And you can test it, try and switch the order around and try with negative 44 minus negative 35.5. Take the absolute value of that, you're going to get 8.5. We're given the period in the problem, but we can see it here as well. It's from one peak to another. So the period is this distance right here, and that's three seconds. So the period is three seconds. And now we can put this all together into a function. And notice all that information right there, you'll see in a moment, I'm, I'm not even referencing 2.8. I just like to do that for myself. The amplitude, I'm going to try it with 8.5. We'll use a cosine function because I'm thinking of this problem in terms from one peak to another. And whenever I do that, I look at cosine. And then I'm going to take the coefficient of x is 2 pi over the period. So the period is 3. So 2 pi over 3, that's our coefficient. And then I'm going to put this in this form. If I put x in parentheses, I can then just put my phase shift next to it. So originally, uh, my cosine wave, let's see if I sketch it like this. Originally, the cosine wave would be here, right? It starts at 0, but we're shifting it. I'm, I'm viewing the shift to the right by 1.3 to hit this point right here. So that means to go to the right, I'm going to subtract 1.3, and this number is our phase shift. And then finally, we add our midline, which is oops, negative. So it's going to be minus 35.5. And we'll test this on Desmos in a second. And I put an x here. I keep doing that. Sorry. That should be a t, because this is in terms of t, time. And in the general format is that the absolute value of this variable, which is called a, is the amplitude. This is sometimes referred to as b, and b is always 2 pi over the period. This number, if you put it in parentheses, is our phase shift. I'll put ps. And then this number here is usually referred to d. Let's say this is c. We're going a, b, c, d. c is the phase shift, and d is the midline. And then I would encourage you to check yourself. You're putting a lot of work into these problems. One easy way to do that is on Desmos. Um, so all you have to do is type in 
f of x equals the function we just typed out, 8.5 times the cosine of 2pi divided by 3, parentheses, x minus 1.3, close parentheses, minus 35.5. Now I can't see it because the function's low, so I'm going to hit shift. Oops. I'm not going to hit shift. I'm just going to click and drag. Oops. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Now, this is not going to help me, so I'm going to hit shift now and drag this out so I can see. I want to see at 1.3 seconds what's happening. And if I click it, I can see there's 1.3 and negative 27. Here's 2.8, negative 44, and 4.3 at negative 27. Now, they want to know what happens at, what was it, um, 2.5 seconds. So I'm just going to type in f of 2.5. And I'm at negative 42 point, we'll round it to 38. That's two decimal places. So negative, uh, negative 42.38. And again, the function, I think it's 8.5 cosine of 2 pi over 3 times t minus 1.3 and then minus 35.5. All right, I hope that helped.